So there we are, the uh, total saves and losses from the last round. And if you remember from the last round, we saved the colonists, so they're going to help us out in the next round, which is going to be Hunt. I could have got Nest here, but I decided to go Hunt. Obviously, Nest is slightly bigger, so I would have got more survivors on that one. But to even it off a bit, we started with the Hunt, then we had a Nest and Rescue. So let's have the Hunt again. So there you can see the perk again on the side get the uh, additional um, colonists to help you out. Unfortunately for those colonists, they didn't last very long because you meet them on the ground and the monster started off and found them almost immediately and he, uh, yeah, he made quite a meal of them. But thankfully, thanks to their dead corpses, I was able to find where the monster is fairly quickly because they appear on the map. You, they show where they go down and they show where they die. So I was able to uh, track the monster very quickly with that and get him uh, stage one, trap him and um, kill him off really. So again, it was a very quick hunt, unlike the normal hunt. But today I thought I'd talk some more about signs to look out for um, you've got the usual ones here I'm gonna go support um, instead of trapper but also don't forget because this is a solo player you have that hot switch um, so you can switch out from character to character so if you don't want to dome if you want to leave it like I did in the last last game switch into trapper with the d-pad and then uh, wait until he's a bit lower health and then dome him or dome him straight away if you don't think that that's going to go. But as you can see I'm up against a wraith and they're very quick moving. But I was fairly confident we could do this very quickly and Hank does a huge amount of damage against the wraith if you can get them to stay still long enough. That's the thing about calling in the uh, orbital drop. It does take a while to come down, and by that time he might be a different place in the map, he might be away. But the great thing to do there, if he's sneaking along, and if you see him sneaking, pretend like you didn't see him, walk past. I saw um, this on another map uh, when I was playing against a Kraken, I could see him in the bushes. He was trying to stay sneaky, I could see him very blatantly. Um, I could see his head and his face. I went cloaked and pretended to walk past him and he could see my um, footprints leading away and then he started to sneak around the corner. I knew he was going to sneak into the next patch of bushes so I dropped the orbital there and sure enough he uh, scarpered in the opposite direction to where the hunters were going and we trapped him and killed him very quickly nice there. The scientist on the team. You learn anything yet? A little. I think the most interesting thing about all this is the eggs the monsters hatch from. The eggs? They're just bags of goo. And isn't that interesting? Break one open before it hatches. Just green goop. No baby monster. Isn't that weird? That, that is weird. Hell, that don't make no sense at all. No, it don't. I mean, no, it doesn't. But how the hell do we get monsters then? Alright, so as you can see, the health bar on the monster is already showing up, and any minute now it's going to show me a colonist getting eaten. Yeah, there's the skull on the map, just over on the left-hand side there. I went into the menu so I could just talk about it there. He uh, started engaging and eating the colonist before I got to ground site, so... I know where he is, I know where he's going, I can see his sort of trail, and... Um, I'll pick him up from there and pick him off very quickly. The uh, great thing about the monster attacking the hunters is you can see where he is, but the bad thing for from the monster's point of view is that um, as soon as he does attack the uh, hunters, you can see him on the map, but then he can use that to confuse and disorientate you if you like. But again, you know, if... Uh, if you ever see someone go down on the health bar up here, it means that that's where the monster is and they're fighting that someone. So I'm in a rush here, so I let my uh, jetpack go dry, but I know I'm going to walk off a cliff, so I'm just having a little look around until I can find the trail. 
tracks. And there it is, tracks. He says tracks again, subtitles on. So, again, I can... I'm going after him fairly full pace. There he is, just flitting across the left-hand side. You can see that sort of trail he leaves. Now, be careful, because sometimes that can be a decoy. And if you do um, trap a decoy in a thunder zone, it will show up as thunder zone like that there. But I know that's not the um, the actual wraith, because there he is as well. So he didn't get away in time. But that's a useful uh, tip. I see him coming for me, so I drop the orbital at my own feet. And it was in the middle of the map, so that breaks up the map a bit. But again, you see uh, the hunters get thrown across the map when the orbital lands near them. So what I'm doing now is I'm keeping his shield on and then attacking the... Uh, Cannon and now putting on the cloak for my medic. I want my medic completely healed. I want her safe. And you can see the medic here. She's shooting at her own people with a gun. That's a useful tip if you're Kyra. Um, shoot at your own feet and you can heal yourself up rather than waiting for the heal boost. I see a lot of that. A lot of people wait for the heal boost and I'm like, no, you can just shoot at your own feet. It will heal you and heal any uh, hunters nearby. Now my quick reload helped me out there, I got a nice segment of health off with that orbital. And I'm able to keep the uh, shield on. That's the most important thing I think for Hank. I see a lot of people going for Hank for the drop and the gun. But mainly you want the shield. The shield is so useful for Hank. If it's Hex Sergeant Hank you want to charge the shields before the battles. If you're using normal Hank, like I am here, you want to use the battles, because you keep that on a hunter, and they will be protected. It adds that extra layer, and they can get away or jetpack or move about a bit, or they uh, get taken out by the monster or get separated. So it's a useful one to have, and I think Hank is the best class on here. Pet Sergeant Hank is very good, but that shield's... Um, recharge during the battle is not a good idea against a monster. Yeah, that during a monster you want to do damage rather than shield or cloak if you need to protect your team because the shield charge up isn't as good as a normal shield like this. So there I can hear him again. Sorry, I'm talking very quickly again. So I can see there's albinos around here so I'm just going to take some albinos myself. Albinos is useful to get that additional buff, and uh, if he had that one, that one is uh, birds don't scare, so he can go past the As you can see, there's a toad. I, I appreciated that my team were going to go into that and started shooting almost immediately. That buff is better than the buff I had before, so I'll go for that one. But as you can see, the monster now engages again, and I'm instantly on the shield. What I want to do is I want to keep the medic safe, and that's the main support me job. As you can see, I'm cloaking here, laying down the orbital, so he keeps away from the medic. But he doesn't go away, he doesn't get forced away, he stays on the medic, so he takes that full damage there. So, uh, I can see his, uh, he deployed there his uh, little ghost and his uh, distraction. And uh, I could see him sneaking away. He sort of flashes invisible and not. When you fire on him, he's visible again. And that other sentinel, it takes damage for the monster and it's its own thing. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't transfer as actual damage on the monster, so it allows him to sneak away. But if you shoot him or set him on fire, a good thing to do is use quite a wide, varied attack, which sends fire on a lot direct. And that will light up the monster let you to keep on him like I'm doing here. So I'm just keeping on him and not letting him sneak away and get his health back. Then he gets started, we know exactly where he is. And he's very low on health here and I'm just shielding to protect him again. Yes, it's near the end of the fight, but it's always good to keep the shield up just in case he gets a lucky shot in on the uh, trapper and escapes before you've dealt the final blow. So I was happy there that the team was uh, effective, so I let them do that. So there you are, perk for this one. 
on day four is always you get more armor on your sentinel guns at the end. If a monster wins, he gets more armor on his minions. He has two minions and having extra armor on them is a very serious problem. But we get armor turrets going into day five, which is always evacuation. So there you are, you see I've got 18,000... Uh, 1,863, sorry, uh, colonists saved, and that is stock that I will always get now. So even if I lose defend on the last day, I will keep that experience, and that will transfer to actual experience of the 6,000 variety. So I will see you in the next video.